you guys. And um, yeah, let's just open in prayer. Yes, Lord. Well, Jesus, thank you that you're present here this morning, mm -hmm. tangibly, Holy Spirit, that you guide us and lead us and lead the words that I'm speaking, Lord, that you've yeah. prepared our hearts thank you, for Jesus. a time such as this, for this morning, Lord. Thank you that the word will be seed that will be fallen fruitful, fruitful ground. Yes, Lord. Lord Jesus, we know that there's nothing that we can do that is outside of you or without mm -hmm. you. We are entirely, entirely, totally dedicated into your hands, Lord. I thank you that yes, I'm thank you, this Jesus. morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, last night, um, my dad asked that I can stand in for him. And um, I've been prepared. And so this is very much going to be with the Holy Spirit moving and, and speaking through me. Um, but also, I don't think the sermon is just something that you need to prepare. Of course, you need to be prepared. But also, the great thing about, I don't want to say Christianity, a life with Christ is the fact that we live in relationship with Him. That means you don't have to be prepared to be a Christian. It's because you are already seated in Christ, and from that position, we, we move yes, forward. Yes. So, yeah, that's, that's what I come to you this morning. So... I've been thinking about just thoughts on relationship versus religion. I think the topic for this morning is just, it's reflections on our relationship with Christ. So many times I think religion has, try, has tried to formalize a relationship. It's like legislation and rules that you want to apply on a relationship. And a relationship is not rules. Relationship is intimacy. Mm -hmm. And I think a, a good illustration of that is if you look at lions in a circus, they know exactly what to do, how to perform, how to act, how to go through all of their little actions, as long as they're in the, on the floor and as long as there's a whip in their presence. But the moment the whip goes away, they, they just there's no action. And that's, that's, that's why performance-based will always be substandard to relationship and intimacy-based. Yeah. But I want to, going through my notes, um, in the early hours of the morning, I came across a little testimony that I just want to share with you guys. So some of you that know me, um, I was single, I'm always, almost 33 years old now. I was single until oh, September, I met her in September, my fiance. And um, you know, just reflecting on, on what, what the Lord has done and the, the, just the goodness of God. I want to read something that I wrote on the 2nd of December um, last year. And the, the title that I read on the note was, In Christ, the life in the miraculous. Um, if it's not humanly possible, if, it, if it's not humanly impossible, then it's not a miracle. God is calling me into a, a conscious reality of a life in the miraculous, where He is the constant, unending, inexhaustible source of and for my existence. Mm. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider. And the context, the context I'm, and the title of writing this, was, I also wrote the context down just so I can remind myself in the future. Um, the context is 4,500 um, rand in my bank account, which isn't, I wouldn't say bad, um, with no humanly foreseeable <laughs> income, and a 4,500 debt payable for my beautiful vehicle repairs that I should have paid in December, but I made an arrangement that I'll pay in January. <laughs> so my total spending for December is equal to the amount, amount that I have, is equal to the debt that I have to pay in, in January. Um, and then, but God, I'm being blessed with the love of my life, and I'm already looking for a ring, while my sister and brother-in-law um, called me to loan the money needed for the ring and God. <laughs> I'm, right, I'm waiting with eager anticipation to see how God is opening the doors and floodgates of divine provision for the path ahead with God. <laughs> and this morning I can stand here, I'm already engaged. I didn't need to loan the money from my, from my sister. And I mean, it's not, it's not me, God just provided. And we already have a date for the wedding. Amen. And yeah, God's an absolute provision is just such a reality and it's amazing just to, to share that testimony mm. and I think there's a lot that we can learn from a relationship between um, between a man and a wife as well um, Ankya loves to reflect back on the day that we met in person so we spoke about three and a half months on the phone and um, <coughs> at first just messages and then later became voice notes and, um, and then we, we met 30th September, I think. Um, 
took her out for coffee. She came all the way from Flagstorp, took her out for coffee, and then we went for steady stumpies in the garage, and then we went to the, the rock pools in the beach that week, and I showed her the, the um, octopus and the fish and whatever. <laughs> and she loves to just reminisce about the way that we met and, and talk about the day and all of the little details of, of you know, what we went through and, and how our relationship developed. I think one of the things that we can glean from that is, is how often do we reminisce about how our relationship started with, with the Lord. And just the little details, the little things where He provided, where you thought everything was hopeless and, and you drove past a field full of flowers and that was the Lord's tangible picture to you. It was made specifically for you to show that He loves you. Mm -hmm. It could be provision, it could be a sign, whatever. I think it's so, it's so important just to reminisce about Rethink, take, walk through those steps again in our relationship because it's it's intimate. It's really it's a place of intimacy. Now, if we if we go back to the word and we should look at where our relationship with God started, I think the best place to go and, and reminisce would be in Genesis. And in Genesis, we would see that that God would say He would speak to the air, so let the uh, let the air produce um, birds, let the water produce fish. Let the land produce every living creature that creeps upon the face of the earth. He would speak to a substance, and then from that sub, in that sub, the sub, something that lives in that substance would come forth. So he'd speak to air, and birds would come forth. He would speak to the water, and fish would come forth. And then he would speak to land, and animals would come forth. But then in Genesis 1 verse 26, the whole narrative changes. He doesn't speak to the substance of air, water, or land. He says in Genesis 1 verse 26, he says, and God said, let us create man in our image and in our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every living thing that creeps upon the face of the earth. You see, the substance he's speaking to when he creates us, the substance he's speaking to is himself. He talks to himself when he creates us. Yeah. You see, a fish was made to live in water, in the substance of water. And a bird was created to live in the substance of air. And living animals were lived were created to live on the substance called earth. And we were created to live in the substance called God. Yes. We, are, we come from Him. Mm. Then we see the narrative continue in Genesis 2 where it goes into the details and it says God took clay and He formed man. You've got this body there, fully formed human. And then He comes and He breathes His, breathes his breath of life into this being. And He creates a living, a living being. Now, just imagine the way that I, I look at the picture, if I, if I have to see the picture in my mind, is it's like somebody that was drowning, was dead basically, and then a lifeguard comes and he does CPR on, on you, puts his mouth on your mouth and he, he breathes air into your, into your lungs. So what's the first thing that you see if you are that dead body and you open your eyes and somebody doing CPR? You're looking straight into somebody's face. It's the... It's like the most intimate position that you can be in. And that was, that was humanity's reality as, as we opened our eyes for the first time. We opened our eyes to look into our Father's eyes in a place of intimacy. You see, religion, well, religion always creates distance between us and God. But, but, but that distance is an illusion. It's an absolute illusion and creation of our own minds. There is no distance between us and God. True. There is absolutely no distance. So, you can take it like this. So God, the moment we can describe God, that moment He, he ends being God. Mm. Because that means you have a full capacity of understanding of what His being is. Mm. And He's limitless. So we can't describe. How do you describe some, somebody who is, who is all-powerful, omniscient, omnipresent? How do we describe that? Mm. So you describe the being not by physical characteristics. Adam, if Adam was created in the image of God, it's not like Adam's body was the physical image of what God looks like. You see, if you, if you have to describe something that is that you can't see, you describe it by its characteristics. And then you can just read, do yourself a, a, a favor and go read through the names of God in the Old Testament. It's a description of His character. Mm. Every, every aspect is a description of His character. And that's how we... He engages with us in every aspect of our lives. So this unseen God, living in the unseen realm, creates 
the seen earth, and on the seen earth, he creates the seen man, and in the seen man, he places his unseen spirit on the seen, so that the physical world can have an interaction with this unseen, yeah. this unseen God, and make at least a part of him visible. Yeah. You see, it's like Powerful. how would you, how do we describe our our position in Christ? Because I just okay, I'm just gonna rewind a little bit. If we look at the Old Testament, you'll see the image of God, Lord, the image of God in Genesis. In the New Testament, it brings it a bit closer. It says, in Christ, or Christ in us. The image of God and Christ in us, which was the mystery of the, the mystery of the ages. I almost sidetracked myself solidly there. <laughs> okay, so how do we describe then our relationship with God in, a, in an analogy that makes sense to us? So if, I, if we were to go to Mossel Bay Harbor and take a bucket and skip a bucket for water, <laughs> sorry man, but you got that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's a bucket full of water, and then we send it to UCT and they do a chemical analysis of this bucket. They would find, they would find, literally they can, they can detect the species that live in that water just by having that bucket. You can do it when you do the chemical analysis. You can literally get a list of every living species in the vicinity of where you got that bucket from. You can see the pollution. You can have traces of, of, of a ship. You can see that bucket is 100% a replica of the ocean where it comes from, the Indian Ocean where it comes from. But that bucket of water doesn't have the same capacity of the ocean. I can't swim in my bucket. We can't keep a whale in the bucket. A boat can't float in the bucket. And that's our relationship to God. God is this ocean. And we are vessels that contain the fullness of the, the Spirit, right? The fullness of God, God bodily in, in Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is, is in us. And he prayed, Father, make them one as we are one. He is in us. The fullness of God dwells in us. <coughs> we don't have, I'm not saying we have the same capacity. So, so how, do we, how do we deal with ourselves then? We throw our buckets back into this ocean. And when we realize what our relationship is to our Father, it makes us look differently at the people around us because that navigates our relationship with the people around us. You see, I can't say, I love the Father but I hate my brother. Yeah. Or somebody that I see walking along the street and I don't even recognize him as my brother, even though he is. You see, acknowledging our relationship to the Father opens our eyes to acknowledging our relationship to the world around us. True. There is only one humanity. There's not many races, there's many expressions. And that, that's the beauty of, <laughs> of these vessels. It's got a multi multiplicity of expressions, but it's one body. Mm. It, was, it doesn't make you less. You see, when humanity fell, the first thing is, the enemy came to them selling them a lie. Didn't, didn't God say, if you eat this fruit, then you'd be like him. But if you read Genesis 1 verse 26, we were created like him. Mm. We already were created in His image. Mm. So coming to sell us the lie that if you eat this, if you do this, performance-based, if you do this, then you would qualify to be like Him. It was selling us a lie. And the devil did the same thing when he tempted to Jesus. He said, I share all these kingdoms, I'll give them. But it, it was already His. Mm. So we must, we must be very... Ons moet ons gedacht is ook uit door die feit dat baie keer is daar een leer wat inkryp. Maar... In Christus is the Allah is by full at all yet onsin. So you see the substance then in the Old Testament is, is Christ in us. And then I want us to go to I forgot my Bible at home. Um, can somebody read Matthew 13 verse 44? Matthew 13 verse 44. Thank you. 
jongen bij baie in sy skip is, kan verkoop hy alles wat hy het, en hy koop daar die land. Okay, so the kingdom of God is like a rich man that finds treasure in the field, and once he's found it, he hides it again, and then he goes away, he sells everything that he has, and he buys the field. It doesn't make logical sense in my mind, because if I found a treasure on somebody's land, he probably didn't know about it, I would take the treasure, and I would buy the field with the treasure. <laughs> 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 but you see, the, the thing is, when, when humanity fell, and that, that distance was created between, between us and God. Remember, the, it says that in the, in the cool of the morning, God dwelt with Adam in the Garden of Eden. It wasn't God hiding his face from humanity after, after they, sent, they fell into sin. It was humanity hiding from God. You see, we, in that moment, the, the knowledge of good and evil created that sense in our minds that I am not enough, I'm not good enough, and if I can't perform to this stature, whatever that picture is in your mind of what that stature should be, then I am not good enough to, to go to God. And, and uh, uh, you, we can see these things in our own lives. If you did something that you know is not according to the standard of God, how does that affect your prayer life? It, will, it immediately creates this, this distance. You don't want to go to God now um, because tomorrow I'll begin my day over and then I'm going to do everything right and then I'll speak to Him. <laughs> Where there is no distance. It's not like he doesn't know you. He's loved you since before you were born. He's loved you. Yeah. So the thing is, when when humanity was lost, for something to be lost implies that it, it belongs. Mm. It doesn't mean we didn't we don't belong. If if the world is lost, it doesn't mean that they don't belong to God. It doesn't mean that he doesn't want the relationship with them. It's just that our eyes have been closed through the knowledge of good and evil. And then Jesus came in the New Testament and He opened our eyes again to see the reality mm. that Christ in us is the hope of glory. Yes. It's not my performance. I can never perform good enough. So we've, we've read um, Matthew chapter 13 verse 44 about the treasure in the field. Now we should remember Jesus is speaking to the people in parables. This was before the cross. He's speaking about the man going out to the field, finding the treasure, going away, selling everything. We should, we should remember that the nations are the field. Mm. Always the, the earth, when it speaks about the earth, many times it's speaking about the nations. The nations are the field. And he came to the field and found the treasure already hidden. Because even though we might, might have fell, fell into sin, it doesn't take away the fact that we were created in his image. His image is still in us. And if his image is still in us, if that spirit that he's breathed into our lives is still in us, it means that we are worthy. We were mm. born worthy. Mm. We were born worthy. Yeah. And that romance that existed between Adam and the Father is the same romance that, that Jesus Christ still has towards us. Yeah. Towards us that know Him, towards those who don't know Him, to those who love Him, to those who hate Him. He still has that romance. He is the lover that would continue following you, following you, following True. you, following you every time you can reject, 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 reject. There's not enough times that you can reject Him that He wouldn't follow you. Mm. There's nowhere you can go where He wouldn't go after you. You see, his substance that is placed in you is from him. It comes from him. Mm. It is one with him. Mm. And he will never let you go. Yeah. That comes for an atheist, a Buddhist, a Muslim. This, this thing, you see, the thing is, we see people compartmentalized. Those are Christians. That's a that. That's a that. You did that. You're a sinner. You're a that. That's a bad thing. And then Paul would come after he understands that Christ in us is the hope of glory. He would come and say, Therefore, then I see no man according to the flesh. No man according to the mm. flesh. Because we are not defined by what we do. We are defined from, by who we are and where we come from. Mm. My actions is simply um, the logical following of what my thought patterns are. If I'm living a substandard life, it's because my mind mm. has not been awakened to the fact that Christ is in me. Mm. The moment we are awoken to the fact that Christ is in us, that moment our steps are being aligned. It doesn't mean we can't make mistakes. It doesn't mean... We can't make mistakes, but, but I, I recognize this relationship between me and him. Mm. So, the treasure in the field, Jesus went away. He found this treasure in the field, in the jars of clay. He went away and he sold God, sold everything he had. He, sat, he, he allowed his son to be offered on the cross. He sold everything that he had. And in that action, he rebought the field. <laughs> he rebought the field. 
And then Paul would go on, um, if somebody can just so long find Colossians 1 verse 26. If somebody can read that. Colossians 1 verse, oh, so, sorry about verse 27. Colossians 1 verse 27. In the meantime, I'll just tell a story. There was a, there was a lady, I can't remember when this was, the 50s, the 60s. And she, she lived in Oatsall, and she was married to one of the rich ostrich barons. And um, she really came to the Lord and was baptized. She had herself baptized. Um, she started speaking in tongues. And her husband, very comfortable, he came from a very traditional background, and for him it was just too much. And he didn't understand it. So he divorced her. Now, back in those days, it was the end of the world. It was basically a, you've been shunned. <laughs> But this lady met a guy from the, the west, northwestern parts of the Free State. He was a, um, a foreman, a foreman on one of the farms. He didn't own land, he was very poor. But he loved the Lord and he loved her and she loved him and they got married. And they, they, they lived in poverty. Now coming from the Otsuan ostrich barons, from a life of opulence, going into like very poverty. It wasn't an issue because for her, she did it for it was a love for Christ. It's not what I'm going through, my circumstances isn't that much of an issue if I have Christ. So eventually they got enough money to buy a little piece of, of um, millet plots, maize, and um, they were planting and harvesting, planting and harvesting. But the rainfall is very erratic in that area, so you can't always plan ahead. And know that you're going to have, you can, you, you're planting your, your millies, but then you have really good faith to know it's going to come up. But one day they, there was a guy who did prospecting in the area. And he said, listen, you know, I want to, if you guys would give me the right just to, to dig in your soil and see what's in your soil. And they found one of the biggest gold deposits on their farm. You see, that the property's been there all the time. They've been farming on that land all of the time. They've been plowing those fields for how many years? But the gold has always been there. You see, the moment we realize Christ in us, it unlocks the value. So, so gold in the ground is, is just potential value. But the moment you take it out of the ground, it becomes currency. And you can operate with that. And that is the awakening when we realize that Christ is in us. It awakens us to, to have that currency where we can work with each other. I recognize Christ in, in every one of you. And we can engage with each other on that level. So, um, can you give us a list of Colossians 1 verse 27? The TPT says, uh, living within you is the Christ who floods you with all expectation of glory. This mystery of Christ embedded within us becomes a heavenly treasure chest of hope filled with riches and glory of His people. And God wants everyone to know it. Wat het besluit om aan een bekend te maak hoe seenrijk en weerlijk die geheimnis vir die nasies is? Die inhoud daarvan is, Christus is in jylle. Sy is jylle hoop op die jylle. So if, if when we reflect this morning as a family, very informal, and afterwards once we done here and we, en ons het ontbijt, let us reflect on this fact that Christ in us is this hope of glory. Mm. And that hidden within us is, is work, something that is that's going to be seed for the other one. Remember, we are part, all parts of one body. If one part is missing, the body doesn't function as it should. We can't just say that we are part of the body. <laughs> if you know it or not, we are part of the body. Sure. Just on a, almost on a closing point, someone once said that the richest place on earth is a cemetery. Because it is filled with all of the books that was never written, the music that music that was never composed, all of the great ideas that went to the grave with people. Yeah. Yeah. Let us realize that there's there's treasure hidden within us, mm -hmm. and that we were made to connect with each other and share that. Mm -hmm. And the emphasis is on Christ. The emphasis mm -hmm. is always on Christ. Mm -hmm. It's not just uh, that we are worthy. It's that Christ mm -hmm. in us is worthy, and that makes us worthy. That's the that yeah. is the natural outflow of it. So you are Christ in us, the hope of glory. I just wanna just wanna pray for us. Lord Jesus, thank you that you that you came to this earth and you, thank you, you found this treasure, Lord. 
and that you went and you sold everything that you had, Lord, just to buy this field. Thank you, Lord, that you reminded us, that you restored us, that you reconciled us, that you co-seated us with you in heavenly places, that you brought back that knowledge that we are, we come from you, that we wish that we should never wonder what is our identity. We know that our identity is locked up in you, yes, and we yes. are lo- we are loved, we are worthy. Lord, that, that there's no place that we can go or any other person can go that is, that is too far for you to follow. Mm. Lord, thank you that we can go and take this, not just head knowledge, but this experiential knowledge and go out into the world and tell people of the goodness of God, the goodness where you came after us, where you came running after us, where you were always there to carry us, even when we thought it was meant for destruction. Yeah. Even the times that we failed, Lord, that you turned those situations around and you created it for created us for our good and for the good of others, Lord. Thank you that we, Holy Spirit, that we can just be so aware of your presence in our lives daily. There's no place where we can go where your Holy Spirit is not with us. Thank you, Lord, for opening our minds and opening our eyes to see the opportunities around us. That that we can just allow, we just give you free card just to move through us and work through us. Lord Jesus, we praise and we worship your wonderful name. We thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Marcel. That was inspirational. Amen. Um, we're going to go to the to the Lord's table this now. You know, next week's going to be Passover time. It's going to be Easter. Powerful time. Lovely. And um, I was getting ready to preach on it this morning with Marcel. I felt last night that Marcel should share a word. And um, you know, when, when, when Passover happened, when, when the Israelites came out of Egypt, they, they, they celebrated Passover because God released them from the slavery of the Egyptians. So they were they had a lamb. God told them to a lamb for a, for a family. So they had a lamb. They slaughtered the lamb and because they and they put the blood on the posts. So now they do they did that because God told them to do it. But that was the that was not the real substance. That was actually the, the shadow of the substance. Because what happened was was it, it was it was just for their sins for that time. When they slaughtered something and they're getting ready to slaughter some more stuff but when they saw that it was just for that time but then the real lamb the the true lamb of god was born and his name was jesus and his name is jesus and he is the lamb of god that took away the sins of the world he not just took away the sins of those people for that year, but he took away the sins of the world. That's your sins and my sins. If you believe that, say amen. amen. That's the powerful reality. So now we are not dealing with the substance. We are with the shadow. We are dealing with the substance. Christ is the substance of our freedom. There's no freedom without him. He is the absolute substance of who we are. We are in Him. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 17, for as He is in the heavens, so are we in this world. Not one day now. He's the substance of who we are, as Marcel explained so beautifully. So the true Lamb of God took away the sins of the world. And now when He said, Jesus said, every time you, you drink of this wine or eat from this bread, you do it to my remembrance. So we are reminding ourselves. We are reflecting, to use the words of, uh, of wisdom. We are reflecting on what He had done for us. As we come to this table, this table is a time of reflection. So you, we are reflecting what He did for us. And remember, everything is locked up in the finished work of Christ. There's not another place that they can take you to. Religion will always want to take you to the next level. You are at the top level already in Christ Jesus. There's no next level for us. We are at the top level in Christ Jesus. When we are in Him, you cannot go. You know, His end was our beginning. 
So everything that he paid for your, your healing is paid for in Jesus' name. It's done. It's for you settle. It's done. It's finished. Your salvation is paid for. Your sins has been paid for. Not just the sins that you did this week or in the previous time of your life. Your sins until the end of your life. All those sins have been paid for. But when we realize who we are in Christ Jesus, Grace engulfs us. And when grace engulfs us, we do not willingly go in around sinning. Why? Because grace gives you the power not to sin. That's the power of grace. The power of what He's done for us. The power of the cross. The power of what we are about to receive now in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready for that? Yeah. Are you ready to receive? Father, thank you for the stable. I pray now, Lord, that you through your Holy Spirit will quicken our reflection so that we can reflect Christ who has already brought us victory. In Jesus' name, be glorified. It's all in the finished work of Jesus. We are standing in the finished work, and the finished work, when you finished, we start. We start from whatever you've done for us, and we live in that place called Christ and victory. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to, can we just from this side, uh, these people, please come and help yourself. And there's a bigger glass for a family. If you want to, if you have a family, you can take a bigger glass. And uh, the senior people can take a small glass. So just come from this side first, and then we can do this side. Thank you so much. Let's reflect on what he's done for us. Thank you, Jesus, for your body that's been broken. As we eat from this body now, Lord, drink from this, this juice, when it touches our bodies, it's your body. We have eaten your body, we've drank your blood. We thank you, Lord, that we are one with you. This simplifies our oneness with the Father who created us in his image and likeness. Glorify you, Father. Thank you for this price that you paid, that we can be free in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There you go. 